limiting instruction um, and make sure nobody has any issue with it. So um, the first paragraph that's kind of general would be the same. And then I would say in the next part of the testimony of this witness, you're going to hear about a statement made by defendant Diamante Kendrick. You may consider that statement only against Mr. Kendrick and only as to count one. You may not consider this statement as to any other count and you may not consider it in any way in determining the guilt or innocence of any other defendant in this case besides Mr. Kendrick. Anything else y'all want? Your Honor? Yes. We just want to renew our objection on the admissibility. Of the, thank you. And Your Honor, on, on behalf of Mr. Stilwell, of course, I joined Ms. Westmoreland, but additionally, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, in this statement, there was certain things that we've already established are not admissible, like Mr. Kendrick, I don't want to mischaracterize what Mr. Kendrick said, but there was some speculation or I heard that so-and-so were involved with other mm -hmm. incidents and we've all agreed that that would not be proper to come in. I just want to make sure that Investigator Dennis is, that is, is, that is clear on all that. And uh, we don't for clarification, y'all are y'all playing the statement excerpts? You're just asking him about things, and are you have you made sure that he knows what not to get into? I do, I did, but I will re remind re remind him. Okay, great. All right, why don't you do that real fast? And Your Honor, I'm going to go back to something first. Okay. Said, so I'll let you All right, so give me right. a sounds good. Okay. All right. And then as soon as he gets back, we'll get the jury in.
Miss Hilton, unless there's something to be gained from having the witness search through and find them, how about next time you just hand the January flyers to the witness? But I think it, it is important, Your Honor, given the stack that was in there. It, it is irrelevant. It is. Yes? Yes, sir. How many are there in that entire stack? Two. All right. And did those all, all appear to be in... Uh, did they all appear to be in chronological order? No. Uh, going, when you looked at it, did it appear to be the earliest day started at top, and then it went in chronological order? Yes, it started in, I think, 2014 or something. Okay. And how many were from January of 2015? Just these two that's in my hand. What's the first date in January that's on there? Uh, January 18th in Tampa, Florida. Florida. What's the other one? Uh, January 21st in Santa Ana, California. All right. So in Tampa, that's January 18th. Yes. Not January 11th. No. Not January 12th. No. 13th. No. 14th. No. 15th. No. 16th. No. Did you see any flyers in that stack from any of those days? No, ma'am. Any flyers from that stack in Miami, Florida? No. From January. Anything in January in Miami? No, ma'am. As a part of your investigation, did you learn that several YSL members went to Miami immediately following the death of Donovan Thomas? Yes. And as a part of your investigation, did Quindaria Zachary tell you that they went to Miami because Mr. Williams had a show in Miami? Or no. performance in Miami? No. What did he tell you why they went? Uh, to get away from all of everything that was going on. Did anyone ever mention you shows in Miami? No. You been to Miami before? Several times. You been to Tampa before? Several times. What's the distance between Miami and Tampa? That's about a good six to seven hour drive, maybe. Now, I want to republish very quickly. State Exhibit 1LL. And again, what was the case number on 1LL? That 1LL on the screen. And I'm going to show you 2LL. Okay. And this is this the 1LL on the screen that you just looked at previously? Yes. At that location? All right. So earlier when I had the 0588 number, do these two numbers go with the same incident, 0587 and 0588? No. No. What we just talked about, 0588, mm -hmm. which is 2LL, correct? Right. That's a nice note that we drew. Correct. And going back to 1LL. That's Drew as well. Okay, so that's fine. So are both 
As a part of your investigation, did you investigate any shootings in which Mr. Shannon Stillwell was the victim of the shooting? Yes. How many such shootings did you, was a part of your kind of investigation? Two. When, do you recall when in September both of those took place? The first was September 13th um, from the, I don't know the actual address, I just know it as the Green Store. Okay. And then when was the second? Uh, the Tierra Jones murder investigation. And did the Green Store shooting happen before the Tierra Jones homicide? Yes. And was there anyone ever apprehended for the Green Store shooting? No. What about for Tierra Jones? Yes. Initially, do you know who arrest warrants were taken out? Yes. Taken out. Who? Uh, Kelvin Watts, Bobby Hardy, and Jamal Ward. And later on, do you know if there were specific people, was there anyone not charged out of those three? Say that again? Out of the initial three, Dominique Carter, Bobby Hardy. No. And, excuse me. Bobby Hardy, Jamal Ward, and Calvin Watts. Were any of them not actually indicted for that offense? Uh, Kelvin Watts was not indicted, and then Dominique Carter was charged. And does Dominique Carter have a nickname? Stewie. What about Bobby Hardy? Smoke. And what about Jamal? Merle. Merle. <laughs> and are any of them affiliated with the gang? All of them are associated with IF gang. Now you're wondering. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you heard yesterday and maybe prior to that as well, sometimes evidence is admitted against some parties and not others or for some counts and not others. And when this happens, the evidence can be considered by you, the jury, only as to the party against whom it's offered and only for the count for which it's offered and not against any other defendant or for any other count or purpose. In the next part of the testimony of this witness, you're going to hear about a statement made by defendant Diamante Kendrick. You may consider that statement only against Mr. Kendrick and only as to count one. You may not consider this statement as to any other count, and you may not consider it in any way at all in determining the guilt or innocence of any other defendant in this case besides Mr. Kendrick. Thank you, Ryan. When you um, met with Mr. Kendrick, was he read his Miranda warnings? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think where I left off is you said that you had... Um, the interview was at the Atlanta Police Headquarters? Yes. Sitting here today, do you remember about what time of day you spoke with Mr. Kendrick? Middle of the day, I guess. It's, 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 Middle of the day, I guess. I'm not sure. Were there portions of the interview where you took breaks? Yes. You said you read his, did you read the Miranda warnings or did um, another investigator read it in the room? I'm not sure. Did you all read it from a card or did you have a sheet of paper that you read it? We from? usually give them a sheet and uh, allow them to read it. Um, we ask them their highest level of education, have them initial and then sign it. Did he ever ask you to repeat anything when you were going over his rights? Not that I recall. Did you ever threaten Mr. Kendrick to get him to speak with you? No. Did you ever promise him anything to get him to speak with you? No. 
Did you tell him about the charges for which he was um, charged with on that day? Uh, I believe Detective Thorpe did. At any point, did he waive, well, initially when you spoke to him, did he waive his rights? No. Objection, Your Honor. It's commenting on my client's right to maintain his silence. Sustained. We would try to set it to voluntariness of... read him his rights did he agree to speak with you yes okay after reading and he understood his rights he agreed to speak with you yes okay uh, and, and let me just let the given that clarification it sounds like it was just a misunderstanding but let me just let the jury know that every defendant every accused everybody who ever is a suspect in a crime has a right to remain silent doesn't have to talk to the police and if they choose to remain silent, it is wildly inappropriate to comment on that. However, this was just a misunderstanding, so we're not going to worry about that. All right, go ahead. Right. When you spoke with Mr. Kendrick, did you speak with him about a fight that occurred at Club Crucial. Yes. And specifically, did you speak with him about a fight that happened at Club Crucial after Kenneth Copeland was beat up at Club Crucial? Yes. And was that fight somewhere around January 6th of 2015? Yes. And specifically, did he talk about his involvement in fighting an individual by the name of Bloody J? Yes. What did he tell you about his involvement in fighting Bloody J? That when they got outside, he was the one that struck, punched Bloody J. And again, this is all after Kenneth Copeland was beat up inside of the club. Correct. During the course of your... Um, Speaking with Mr. Kendrick, did he talk to you about any conflict or tension he had with an individual by the name of Rich Homie Kwan? Yes. What did he tell you about his the tension or confidence he had with Rich Homie Kwan? He spoke about a, uh, he had went to a club, um, I don't remember the exact date, and when he walked in, he saw Rich Homie Kwan, and Rich Homie Kwan, uh, cousin or something, uh, no one said nothing to him when he walked in, and then once he got to a certain area, he spoke of how Rich Homie Kwan began pointing at him, and his cousin or something had pulled him to the side and basically said, don't, don't do that yet, don't do that. And uh, he basically explained that he was just there, but he could see how everyone was kind of positioning themselves, and initially he wanted to leave, but he didn't want to look like he was basically scared or something, so he stayed. Uh, but it was basically tension in there. Was this before or after January 10, 2015? This was after. The incident that he was telling you about was after? Yes. When you spoke with Mr. Um, Kendrick, did he acknowledge a beef between YSL and If Gang? Yes. Did he ever speak with you about his desire or wanting to be a member of the Bloods? Yes. In speaking with Mr. Kendrick, did he ever appear to be confused about his understanding what a gang was? No. <clears throat> 
during the course of the interview, did he talk about gang banging or being a part of a gang? Yes. During your interview, did he ever claim to no longer be a part of a gang? He basically uh, spoke about uh, moving on past that as the music was starting to take off and he basically indicated that he felt like he was a nobody. He, he didn't respect the gang culture of having uh, like leaders or different stuff like that. And he basically said he deemed himself a blood. So he started being, being a blood. Did he talk with you about this incident following the fight that we just viewed a few moments ago? Yes. What was he able to tell you about what happened following that fight at Club Crucial? He I mean, excuse me, at Magic City. He basically told us how he, he was filming a video that day and it kind of fell through and he had some, had a guy high, had some lean and uh, was kind of having a bad day. And then his, his friend, Duke called him basically telling them that they just jumped and he was like pull up on me and so they met up somewhere well hold on you say pull up on me what does that mean <laughs> meet me somewhere <laughs> and basically they met somewhere and uh he felt like it wasn't his beef but he's almost yeah. coming to the aid of his friend and so they came up with the idea of going to retaliate and when they were stopped, where was where were they stopped? Where did they see the police at initially? Trestle Tree, Trestle Tree Apartments. And is trust what is the significance of Trestle Tree Apartments? Trestle Tree is a strong, like a main hangout for Kelvin Watts and his gang members. Okay, and I'm going to show you what's been admitted as 27 DBVP. With the chain on it. Okay. Now, did they ever make it to Trestle Tree? They being Mr. Arnold and Mr. Kendrick. They made it to Trestle Tree, but there was a large police presence. And so they attempted to uh, leave Trestle Tree. And according to Mr. Kendrick's, he didn't know his way around over there. And so they had to make a U-turn. When they made the U-turn, that alerted police. And uh, that's how the chase initiated or started. And... Did he talk to you about the guns that were found in the vehicle? Yes. And did he advise to you which gun was his? Yes. And do you remember today which gun he said that was his? Initially, uh, he spoke about he had just purchased the uh, stick, which would be the long gun. Okay. And then he was the driver. And so um, the handgun, I believe, was found in the driver's area. During that 
interview, did you speak with him about the murder of Donovan Thomas? Yes. And I'm asking specifically, did he ever tell you where he, whether or not he could remember where he was on the night that Donovan Thomas was murdered? Uh, I believe he did. You remember where he said he was? I don't. I think he said he was at his girlfriend's house. And do you know the name of that girlfriend? Boucher. Boucher. Now, as you did your investigation over that span of investigating the incidents between January of 2015, at some point in 2015, did your investigation conclude? It never really concluded. Um, our unit was tasked with stopping crime. Um, our, our unit was on the floor with our chief. Anytime there was a significant incident, they reached out to our unit to assist. Homicide usually dealt with if there was a, a, a murder, but gangs usually dealt with what led up to the murder, the murder, and what was coming afterwards. So we were tasked with different assignments or different incidents. Okay. And towards the end of 2015, excuse me, did you deem this gang war between YFN and YSL Operation Planters? I didn't deem it, but... That was it, became named. And at some point or during the end of 2015, um, what was kind of the result of Operation Planners or what kind of happened? Um, I'm waiting for a response. Uh, yeah, the, no, no, not for, not for you. Um, Your Honor, I believe that is going to be relevant as to how they moved on and kind of ended this portion of the investigation. Sustained. All right. Let me ask you this. When initially was Kenneth Copeland the target, did it appear as if Kenneth Copeland was the target of YFN in the early months of January 2015? Yes. At any point, did it appear that that target shifted to anyone else? <laughs> and speculation. Sustained. Now, I want to transition and transfer into... Music. As a gang investigator, has music ever become part of your investigation? Yes. Tell the jury, how does music become a part of your investigation? In gang culture and in rap music, a lot of times uh, some of the artists um, either highlight, taunt, or humiliate their opposition through music. And um, I think it's part entertainment, but from the position of an investigator. Okay. I'm going to object for the position of investigator. Well, I can... this, this, this is not relevant for the position of investigator to go to what the jury is hearing about the allegations. <clears throat> As a speak as your expertise as a gang expert. You want me to repeat what I just? No. Your Your Honor, I'm also going to object. This is outside of his expertise as a gang expert. Now we're talking about musicology and lyrics, and that is outside his expertise. Overruled. I think you can continue. As rephrased by you. Okay. <laughs> as a gang expert. Tell the jury how mu how music can sometimes be involved in gang culture and rap and how those two can co coincide. In gang culture and rap music is sometimes used to taunt, humiliate, and highlight some of their actions or to humiliate their opposition. Um, a lot of times it's almost as if no one knows about it then it didn't happen. So it's an opportunity to, to showcase what we did or to highlight what we Detection did. on commenting on someone's intent, Your Honor. 704. Sustained. 
So don't come. What have you found? Let me ask you this. You talked about sometimes music can highlight, taunt, and humiliate. How have you seen examples of that as you've investigated as a gang investor? How have you seen that type of highlighting, taunting, and humiliation in in music? You said, how have I seen it? Yes. Um, for example, uh, the song Get It Back in Blood. Um, Get It Back in Blood is basically uh, celebrating retaliation. Um, illustrating to anybody that I'm going to get it back in blood. You do something to me, I'm going to retaliate to get it back in blood. And it basically spells it out in the song. And as a law enforcement officer, or a gang investigator specifically, when you're doing your investigation, do you look for music and then start your investigation? Or are you investigating crime? Fiction asked and answered previously. Well, I don't know the answer to that because I wasn't here when he testified <laughs> previously. Um, yeah, I, I don't recall specifically, that's all, that's all I say. I can't recall if he specifically talked about it. I don't recall. Do you recall whether you already talked about this? Judge, I've been here three times. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to keep up myself. Okay, well, um, yeah. Why don't you just, if, if you need to hit that briefly, to just bear with me. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Do you... When you're investigating, do you look for music and say, let me investigate this person? Or does the music somehow come a part of the investigation? Relevance, Your Honor. Overruled. We don't chase music. We chase crime. And, and through our investigation, all things are on the table. Um, we, my job, when I work to what his job is, Your Honor, this is, it's just, it's this just is not a Okay. In a song, when you may listen to a song that might have evidence of whether it's a crime or what you call highlighting, taunting, or humiliation, is the entire song often the subject of the humiliation, taunting, and highlighting, or might there be certain portions? Sustained. When you're hearing a song, does the entire song always humiliate, taunt, and highlight? Or could it be portions of the song that humiliate, taunt, and highlight? Just a portion. It might be a subliminal message, a small snippet. 704, Your Honor. It's the same thing, the intent. And talk to the jury a little bit about subliminal messaging and how that can, what that looks like in a song. Beyond expertise, we never had a Dalbert hearing on yes, this. Yes, we did. He, Not on I, this. Have the, I have the Dalbert order. All right, we didn't have to take a, either a break or approach.
rough with that plumber here in no, that was me, sorry. Uh, there's a rough of the court ruling at the very least on the Dauber hearing, but I don't know that we have a rough of the actual hearing. Yeah, I know. All right. And everybody knew, right, that the state was at least going to offer investigator Dennis to testify about the lyrics, right? This is just seems like the kind of thing that if y'all wanted the court to be having looked at this, you could have given me a heads up on. I was unaware that there would be um, testimony as to, oh, this is this is decoded messages. That was never well, discussed. Well, I know, but I ruled on that, and I sustained the objection on that, and Ms. Hilton understands that. So on the broader topic of is he even qualified to testify about lyrics as a part of gang investigations, which I understand y'all now asserting that was never covered. I'm not asserting that. What I understood was Detective Dennis over objection would testify in this song, this is said, this lyric is said. That's what I believe the lyric is. That's uh -huh. the lyric in this song. Right. That's it. Now we're getting into, oh, we're sending messages. No, we're not going to. I understand. That's what <laughs> I was objecting She's not, to. right. And so is there any other objection to him being able to testify about using lyrics in his investigations, in his opinion, at, which is only his opinion, as to what significance that has to his investigations. Well, I'm not waiving my objections because I've objected to it, but that's what I believed was going to be testified to. But Understood, just that but I'm asking, now. it seemed at the bench that some people were maybe saying, we don't believe the dog, that he was ever qualified as an expert to be able to testify to any extent about lyrics. If that's, if I'm just misunderstanding, then please correct me, but we don't need to find the hearing transcript and sort it out if y'all aren't maintaining that. I don't, I don't think that um, you're incorrect. I think you're correct on what we said. Okay. And, and, and just, you know, don't want to seem like we're being cagey about it, but it was in December of 2022. Okay. Well, well you know, and, it and, may and be that the easier thing to do is to just bring him in and do this little part of it now. I don't mind doing that if y'all, you know. Um, I don't want to speak for everyone else. If, if there is a rough um, of the of the finding, I don't know. perhaps that might be. Oh, helpful. I've looked at the finding. That doesn't, I mean. Well, not, not that, the order. I, I, the ruling. There appears to be just the ruling, not the actual hearing. Exactly. I can yeah. email that to everybody. I'm not sure. That, that might be helpful. Well, y'all can certainly look at it, but. Um, that, it, that won't take very long. And then if anybody wants, we can just have him come testify outside the jury's presence and I'll make a determination as to whether he has the necessary expertise to be able to testify in the way that um, was about to be asked. And Your Honor, to be clear, it's not about the lyrics, it's about gang promotion uh, in the music. So it's not specifically about, I think, maybe Mr. Weinstein said musicology. We're not talking about. I know that, which is why I overruled that objection.
a rough or the Daubert hearing. What we've got a rough of so far is some of his trial testimony. So, well, regardless, I'm going to recess for a few minutes. It looks like y'all are maybe trying to pull it up from the live stream, which is fine if you find it. But I'm going to recess while y'all do that. And if any of the defendants need to use the restroom, y'all go do that as well. They just went outside to get Well, it. Mr. Box is here. Is he? I didn't even see him. <laughs> Go ahead. Can I proceed? Yes, please do. Um, so understand the court's, the court's ruling in regards to Detective Dennis not being able to testify about uh, subliminal messages or anything like that. Um, and just going really to the basic issue of what he was qualified uh -huh. for, um, I, I'm just going to take my direction from uh, the transcript that was uh, thankfully sent to us by uh, Ms. Pressfield, as well as the, the court's um, actual order. Um, let me say first that um, the Daubert hearings were held initially back in December of 22, but I uh -huh. think the Detective Dennis, if I'm remembering correctly, was one of those who we weren't able to do then, so he may have been in 2023. Okay. That, that notwithstanding, um, I don't have any recollection of the detective being uh, questioned or talking about his ability to interpret lyrics as part of his expertise. Uh -huh. And so if we're relying on what the court um, ordered or what the court ruled, I look at page six of, of the court, as, and I know you have it in front of you. I do. Um, the court's order, um, which was drafted by, by the state. Um, it's adopted by the court, though, so that's right. really neither here nor there. Go ahead. Right. And, and so um, I just know that there is nothing in there where he is qualified uh, to testify about anything in regards to any lyrics, in regards to inter interpretation of rap lyrics, nothing in regards to his training um, or his qualification thereof. So um, we maintain our position that he is not qualified to testify okay, about well, what the state intends to qualify. I thought that what y'all were looking back at was the live stream of the Daubert hearing. We couldn't find it. Okay. Well... The order on page five says that Detective Dennis also, quote, has extensive experience in evaluating their social media and communication practices, unquote. So if nobody can answer for me one way or another what it covered, and you maintain that you don't think it covered this, or you don't know what it covered, I'm happy to just have him come in here and let's hear his expertise on that and go on with it. We're fine, because we, right. we, we, we do not accept that when the court says communication patterns that they're talking specifically about rap lyrics. That, that's how I don't, I don't know. Let's get him in here. If nobody can remember. And we don't have a transcript. Yeah, I need the detective, please. And Miss Hilton, did, did either of y'all handle the Daubert on this witness? No, Your Honor, and what he was qualified in is a gang expert, and I, I am positive he talked about how music, how gang members Were you use there? music. Were I you was, there? I was proud of Okay. And, and how, is this from your memory? This is from my memory, how music can play a role in gang promotion, how music can play a role in gang, um, in the promotion of the gang, and that is what we're talking about. We're not talking about lyrics and musicology, but how does... Like how does music play a play a role in in the game? 
Do you recall the Daubert hearing November. In, involving you yes. in this case? Yes. Do you remember whether you testified to um, your expertise and experience in terms of looking at lyrics and songs and yes. using those in your yes. gang investigations? Yes. Okay. Given that, I'm going to... Anybody want to voir dire him on, on that topic, not his expertise, but whether he in fact testified about that already in the Dalbert hearing. Can I yeah. That? You talked about lyrics the last time I was here with the halftime song, me and uh, Mr. Adams. Also, the last time I testified, the second time. Is it going to be anything beyond that? That type of same type of testimony? No, that's, that's it, Sharon. I mean, it is how does the how do gangs use music period what, what's your question going to be um, whether or not he is qualified to do any interpretation of uh, music uh, rap lyrics as relates to his expertise in gangs not, not whether or not um, uh, he's familiar with communication patterns of gangs but specifically whether he can look at a particular rap lyric and make any interpretation about what that means to 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 gangs specifically in regards to this case is that something that was already covered in the Delbert hearing yes all right we're not going to recover it I mean I don't have any reason to not believe this witness understood okay let's get the jury well honestly we should just let the jury go out to lunch at this point how much how long are we going to be with this witness? Um, Your Honor, probably about an hour, hour and a half at that. All right. Um, you know whether lunches are here yet? They're not. All right. All right. After continuing the session, we go into that. Okay. Let's get the jury back in. All right, thank you. Um, Ms. Hilton, you and just one member of the defense approach. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to get you back out here only to tell you that I'm going to release you for lunch. Um, I, I sort of had a thought about something when y'all were on the way out that I think we need to probably take care of before we continue with the testimony of this witness. Um, so I'm going to release y'all for lunch. And if y'all could be back at um, 1.15, please.
Thank you. You can go ahead and be seated. So, um, actually, in the last like two seconds, Ms. Persfield has received the rough of the Daubert hearing. So, she's going to send that out to everybody. And if it's already resolved, then it's resolved and we can all just go to lunch. If not, we'll stick around here, do that little bit of a Daubert hearing, and then go to lunch. So, just give us a few seconds, or well, a few minutes. So, honestly, you know what, Ms. Persfield, how about you be looking and why don't we just go ahead and do our mini Daubert? And Your Honor, you found yeah. it online too. We could share it if you if you want to do it that way too. Oh, if if no, if you found it and it's we have an answer, great. No, no, no. I, we we have the YouTube position. Oh, didn't watch it yet. How long? I mean, I would imagine it's pretty long, right? Um, I have it, but I didn't see the link. Unless that's searchable. You were here for an hour? Yes, in my down here. Okay, I, I don't think it's... Yeah. Yes. That is so cool. Most of the time, so... If you give but me like words, yes. That's you, amazing. If you give me a few minutes. Okay. Well, no, if this one is searchable. Okay. Did you send it to me? You've been, somebody be looking at the transcript that we have and. It can, make, can you share the YouTube link with us, thing? Thank yeah, you. I think it just takes a minute on our internet for things to get. Uh, Detective Dennis clearly testified about lyrics and understanding what's going on in the music and it maybe just meaning something to the average listener and other people to other things to members in a gang so Secretary 16 um, Secretary 16 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 This this was covered and he was qualified, so I'm satisfied. Fifty 
16. <laughs> All right, so he's qualified. We're breaking for lunch. See y'all back at 115. Thank you. All right, thank y'all.